Gabriela on the scene today with Talk Network Radio. We have a real treat for you just around the corner, and that is Empowered Living with Jeff Bird. Jeff is the owner of Jeffrey Bird Coaching, and he will be coming to you weekly to teach you more about Empowered Living. Hello and welcome. This is Jeff Bird with Jeffrey Bird Coaching, and this is Empowered Living. I'm so glad that you tuned in today. We've got a topic that I think applies to all of us and I think will help you be encouraged, be more peaceful, be more at rest, and be more present when you are present if you engage in this. The name of the topic is something that I borrowed from author John Eldridge um, and it really stuck with me. The title is Benevolent Detachment. Benevolent Detachment. And what I think this word means, or these words, it means, it doesn't mean you don't care, but it means that you can't care about everything all the time without reaching emotional exhaustion and getting to a point like I have in the past where you really don't care. You care, but you can't afford to care. You've got to get relief. You've got to get away. You've got to get rid of it. So what it means is that we can't be healthy if we don't practice benevolent detachment. And it means we're not putting our whole hearts and our whole emotion connected to everything we hear about. Because these days, as you well know, just like I do, we live in a global 24-hour, seven-day-a-week world. All the problems of the world are available at our fingertips via our smartphones or our computers. We hear almost instantly as news happens, as bad things happen, and it's just the nature to share difficult things more than to share positive things. So what we have is a constant bombardment of bombardment of difficult things, and it doesn't stop unless we stop it. So, you know, back in the day, um, you know, there were healthy boundaries that were more in place. Um, if you wanted to spend time with somebody, you had to get in the car and drive to their house and sit on the porch and have a conversation. And you had to respect visiting hours. You know, you couldn't just show up in the middle of the night. But now the news does not stop. The difficult news does not stop. It happens all day long, um, into the night. People, people have learned to just text us for anything. And what I've, what I've noticed is that those really diligent people, the hard workers, they don't know when to shut it off, especially if they have a, an empathetic, caregiving personality. And they will just let people violate the boundaries and come in when it's not an emergency and when they don't need to and um, at the wrong times. And uh, we have to establish those boundaries that give us this room to have benevolent attachment. Here's a couple of ideas that I've gotten. There are many, but these are just a few tips to get you started. Uh, these are ideas that I've had that I've, tr I've tried to practice, and it helps because burnout is always lurking just around the corner for all of us, and many, many people are in that burnout state. They're just surviving, doing what they have to, but really, they're, they're on empty on the inside. Their emotional tank is depleted, and I'll tell you one thing. I can't, I've learned that I can't give you a ride very far if I'm on empty. If there's no gas in my tank, you might as well not ask for a ride from me because I got nothing to give you. <laughs> you can come sit in the car, but we're not going very far. <laughs> so um, here, here's a few tips. Uh, number one is obvious, and it's detach from the media. Turn off the input. The one thing you don't need, unless you're an emergency response, is more input. You don't need more input, especially of difficult things, and sometimes not of other things at all. I find more and more these days, I, I don't want the TV on, I don't want music on, I just want to sit in the quiet. I just want to be left alone for a minute and in the quiet, free of other, other problems. And I think that we all need that. We are not made to carry the burden of everything in the world. The world was never meant to be on our shoulders. And a lot of us are carrying far, far more because of the, some of the ways we've structured society, we're carrying far more, and with the, so, with the media and the social media, we're carrying far more burdens than we were ever meant to bear. The second thing is, number, so number one, detach from the media, all types of media, unless it's critical to what you do. Just get rid of it. You don't need more input. The second thing is get outside. 
as much as you can. I know it's hot now and it's humid. At least it is where I am. But go out in the morning. Get outside. Look at something natural, something that people didn't make, right? Even in, uh, I've heard that in Japan, even in Tokyo, one of the busiest, craziest cities on earth, everybody has a garden. Even if it's a little space on the back of their apartment, everybody has a garden. They need to detach from this man-made world and get into this beautiful, created space. I believe it's a space that God made because he cares so much. He wants to renew us. He wants us to witness those miracles. Look at those seeds, all different kinds, and they all go in the same dirt and get the same sun and water, but yet they sprout into so many different kinds of plants and fruit trees and flowers and beauty. It's a miracle. And we're made to witness those miracles and to be in awe of those. So get outside. There are miracles all over the place. Um, The second thing is soak in the beauty. Don't just run through it. (laughs) I remember I was out at uh, Henry Cowell Redwood uh, State Park uh, a couple of years ago. My wife and I went there on our honeymoon, and it was these huge, majestic redwoods. And it was just like, wow, this incredible place. And people were just running through it you know, not noticing it. And, and I understand that, you know, you, we got to have health too. We got to take care of our bodies, but it's like, wow, sometimes it's nice to soak in, let it sink in this wonder that you're in the middle of. We're surrounded by them all the time. This natural world is full of them. And you know, the thing I love about outside is it's different every time I go there. I am, if I'm in my house, it's exactly the way I left it. <laughs> if I go outside, it's constantly changing and no two moments are the same. It's always something new. It's always something fresh. It invites me forward into the next moment, into the next one. That So soak in that beauty. Don't just run through it. Take, take a few minutes, even if you just have a minute. Take a minute and just stop and just, just rest your mind from thinking about the next thing you have to do and soak in that beauty. And the next thing uh, along that lines is be mindful. Mindfulness is a concept that uh, the author... Uh, Thich Nhat Hanh brought from uh, Vietnam over to the West. Um, But it's something that all of us can do, and it really helps. It helps us get into the moment. And really, it's essentially just noticing our five senses and what they're interacting with. We can get so in our heads, so busy with the things we're thinking about, the problems in the world around us, the next thing we have to do, that we don't notice the moment that we're in. I remember one story that my wife tells me, um, Thich Nhat Hanh was with somebody and they were, uh, it was a busy businessman and, and they were eating a tangerine and Thich Nhat Hanh stopped him. He was just kind of mowing through the tangerine and Thich Nhat Hanh stopped him and he said, hey, how does that tangerine taste? And the guy was like, hmm, haven't really noticed. And I've noticed that I do that too. I'll just mow right through whatever I'm eating and not really notice, wow, look at the flavors. Notice the, the, the fragrance, uh, the aroma of the food, uh, or notice the aroma of the flowers or the colors or how amazing that is or how beautiful that is. But be mindful of the senses. You know, we've all got sight and hearing and smell and taste and touch. What are you feeling right now? What are you seeing? What are you hearing? What's in your environment around you? This just helps you get to where you really are and appreciate the things that are around you. Because it's easy to take them for granted and just go up from the next thing to the next thing to the next thing without ever stopping and going, wow, I'm surrounded by some beautiful things, and I'm grateful for those. And, and that's another thing. Notice the small miracles. Notice the small miracles. We are surrounded by those miracles every day, whether it's our weather, whether it's the tree outside, whether it's the clouds, uh, whether it's, there, there's just all kinds of miracles, whether it's the coffee, that came from some other country that somebody cultivated and picked the beans and dried them and roasted them and shipped them, shipped them to here. And now we've got this wonderful cup of coffee that we chug down in the morning to get going. But taking the time, noticing those small miracles that are around us every day, it'll rejuvenate you because there's so many difficult things. You can think on difficult things constantly. You can have bad sleep, you can have bad health, you can have bad emotions, or you can notice those small miracles constantly. Doesn't mean you're sticking your head in the sand, but you're limiting the bad news to things that are really your responsibility that you can and should do something about. And you're tuning the other out. You know it's there, but you're not focused on it. You're focused on the beauty and the small miracles. And then lastly, uh, is engage in gratitude. 
engage in gratitude. There are so many things to be grateful for, even in the midst of this insane world that we're living in right now. There are so many things to be grateful for. Um, You can be grateful for the chair you're sitting in, grateful for the air conditioning in the house you're in, grateful for the food in the fridge, grateful that you have a fridge, that you're not going out and storing food in a creek somewhere like my grandma used to do. You know, grateful that you've got a supermarket to go to and get food, that you don't have to grow everything yourself. There are numerous things to be grateful for. Um, And practicing that makes a huge amount of difference in our mental health. Our brain is comprised, uh, uh, the cerebrum is the big part of our brain, and there's a little part on the back. It, it, that's the kind that kind of looks like coral, uh, and they call it, that's why they call it brain coral. But there's a little part of our brain called the cerebellum on the back, and it's only 10% of the brain's mass, and it looks different than the rest of the brain. But even though it only has 10% of the brain's mass, it contains 50% of the brain's neurons. And when it's in a state of gratitude and you do a spec scan on it, the cerebellum lights up. It's firing. It's active. Uh, it, it's, it, it's, it's just lit up like a Christmas tree, you know? It's, and so I think, wow, when we're in a state of gratitude, it really lights our brain. We're working with more of our brain, 50% more. And that same, that same cerebellum, when uh, somebody's in an angry state or frustrated or whatnot, and they do a spec scan on it, there's no activity shown. It's just shut down. So when we're, in, when we're staying in that state, we're losing a lot of our brain power. We're only half the people we're meant to be. So engage in gratitude. My wife and I keep a gratitude journal because we don't want to miss the little things. And sometimes we just write the little things that we take for granted that aren't so small, really. Uh, and just like we learned in the pandemic, hey, if they go away, you got a big problem. If there's no toilet paper to be had, you got a problem. Easy to take it for granted, though. And then when the big things happen, when the big prayers are answered, when the big good things happen, we write those down, too, and we star them because we want to we want a record to go back to and remember so that we don't forget and just take all of the all of the myriad of things for granted that we should be grateful for and just focus on the difficult things. It's so easy to do, and we have to work against it. Um, This whole life is a climb uphill, and we're always working against gravity. It's so easy to go downhill. We have to have some intentional effort to work against it, to be at peace, to trust, uh, to trust the things God says, to enter into this world that that we've been given and the beauty of it, the miracles of it, the quietness of it, the restorative power of it, and let it work its miracle in us. I'm so glad you tuned in. I hope that these uh, tips and this talk is helpful to you. Uh, If you'd like to reach out, I'd love to hear from you. I'm Jeff at jeffbirdcoaching.com. Bird is with a Y, J-E-F-F at J-E-F-F-B-Y-R-D-C-O-A-C-H-I-N-G. Dot com. Please let me know what, uh, what you benefited from this or if you have something that helps you engage in benevolent detachment. Thanks so much for tuning in. Until next time, God bless you.